This is Mike from Minimal 3D Paint. Today I'm continuing work on my Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus. And today I'm just going to do some wiring. And so we'll see how far I can get done today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to work on is I want to install the power switch, and that's going to be critical as I do the wiring. Right now, I'm sort of not sure what all I need to do here. There's a couple steps where, uh, particularly it's talking about the uh, ZN stop. I don't think I need to do the ZN stop. I'm also not seeing those parts. So right now I'm getting into the sketchy area of the build where I'm not exactly sure what I need to do and don't do because it's I'm going between the Voron instructions and the form bot. I'm still not complaining about the state of the instructions. It's just figuring out which one's which and which ones I need to follow. Now, if I switch over, I'm looking at the bottom of the printer. I have it upside down. I'm going to, this is the back of the printer. From the printer is up this way. And I'm trying to watch the screen here as I'm, I'm doing this. If I bump the tripod, I'm going to apologize. I want to point out I'm still using my new camera, which I'm like beyond thrilled with. Um, I really like the quality I'm getting. So the if you remember from the last video, I did change out the connectors for the DIN rails. I'm using the connectors from the Mercury One as opposed to those for the Voron. I really like the Mercury One better. Now, there is an issue with that. They are sitting a little higher. I think I'm going to be okay because I'm looking at this piece and this is using the old connector. And this one appears to be the highest I have sitting here anyway. So I think I'm going to be okay, um, but we'll, we'll see. So I might have to switch back to the old Voron connectors, but I really don't want to. I think they're just really tight and hard to work with. So let me get the parts out and let's get this power switch installed. Okay, to start out, I have two M3 T-nuts and I'm just gonna place those right in this area. And let me get this diagram up here so you can see it. I'm just gonna slip those in right here. And I probably need to wrestle this around a little bit. See if I can get in and let's see. So those are always I have fun time snapping these in. So those are in, and then let me find the printed piece that goes on here. They go to the next one. So I need this piece. Now this actually looks like they've installed the power switch. So let me find those parts and we'll get this situated. Now I assembled the switch off camera, but I'm gonna point out just something interesting. The switch actually came with four fuses. Now I pulled the case off here and there's already a fuse in here but it looks like I have several extra fuses. So I think that's okay. Now, if I'm interpreting this correctly, I need to move things around a little bit. And this is gonna go something like this. So let me figure out how I have to arrange this. And, oh, it's pretty close. But let me get this arranged and then we'll get it all screwed in. I've simply just lined up this piece and I have two M38s. Let me use those to screw this in. I will say this, it's a little bit of an odd angle. So just as an FYI, so we get this in. That's nice and tight. So that's looking good. So we have that in. And so let's move on. I've switched my camera angle. So we're looking at the back of the power switch. I know my camera is uneven. It was really hard to get this shot. So we're going to have to figure this out now. I have a little bag. Let me see if I can get the label in this shot here. Uh, it does say AC parts. So 
the sort of label where I can figure everything out. Now, I said this is going to be hard to see. But I'm going to do the best I can. Now, on the power outlet here, you have three notches. On the top notch by itself, I'm putting on the green yellow wire. So I'm going to slide that in. Okay, so I have that in. I'm just going to put that off to the side. Now I need the inside one on the switch that's brown. So I should have a short brown one. So that's this one right here. And what I'm going to do, gosh, brown's going right here. And it's clipping right here. Well, going to the top or the bottom? Bottom, I think. Okay. Let's go into the bottom. I have another brown one. I have another brown wire with fork connection on the end. So I'm going to plug this in. The plug's going to go on the top here. So I have on the switch, brown and brown. Next, I have a blue wire, and this should be a short wire. And I'm going from here. Oh, let me do this. So this brown wire should go on the inside of the power outlet. So this is going on the inside. Looks right. I'm just trying to make sure I totally understand this. Yeah, that looks right. So now I'm taking a short blue one as connectors on both ends. And it's going to the last connection on the power switch. And that's going on the last, it's going on the bottom here of the power switch. Now, let's see if I can get this in without breaking anything. It's not slipping on there too easy. Let me take the brown one off. Well, I'll be able to take the brown one off. Let's see if I can get this on here. It's just hard to say. I mean, what doesn't help is I'm wearing aggressive lenses and with it being this close it's hard for really hard for me to see now they recommend in the directions 100 percent flip this bad boy over and so having it upside down does seem to help now what i want to do is let's see if i have a Okay, so I have the blue is totally on. So now I have one more blue one. So I have a blue with a fork and blue with a, a connector on it. So I'm just connecting to the top of the switch. So I have that, put the wires aside. Now these are all the wires for the power switch. So everything there is now connected. So what we're going to do is move on to the next step in the wiring. Okay, so you can see our wires are all right here. And I need to figure out where these need to connect. I'm not sure if I have these all in the right order or not. So I want to just, ideally I want stuff to go to each one. And 
Let's switch over and take a look now at the other set of directions and see if we can follow along with those. What's interesting is this is the PCB right here. And each of these connections is labeled. You can't quite see it. Or maybe you can see. Try zooming in a little bit. You might be able to barely see it. There's an L here. So it's L N and FG, LNFG. Now, each of these wires is labeled. So it's power inlet PE, so that's the power inlet, to PCB, and this says PG, but I'm willing to bet that's supposed to be FG, because I looked at all the wires, and I don't see an FG anywhere here. So what I'm gonna do is connect this, to the FG slot, which is right here. And let's take the cap off. I need to loosen these, and then I'll just slip these in. So let me zoom back out. Let me pause, I'll zoom back out so you can see everything, and then we'll get it all loosened up. So I'm taking the power inlet to the PCB FG right here. I'm just going to tighten that in. And I'm, this is following along right with the diagram in the corner. So next we need the blue, and that needs to go to the N, which is the connection right here in the middle. Now what's interesting is, Legos come with this kit, but I'm not sure I'm seeing what connects into the Lego. So that's some sort of interesting. And I have this brown wire. The brown wire following the diagram should go right into the L connection. So we'll push that down. So check all these. And let's put the case, the cover back on. So we now have the power switch is now connected. I'm just going to push these wires down so I can see everything. And next, I'm going to start connecting everything to the power supply. We'll start off with the green wire. And so we have this little green wire here, and that's PSU to FG again, we're gonna take off this little case. And to start off, let's loosen everything up. So I can real quickly connect. Now I probably should have loosened all these before I situated them in the case and on the DIN rail. And I'm saying that because I'm having to push down a little bit because get my driver to turn. So the FG is down on this end and on the power supply, the FG is the squiggly line right there. Let's loosen that one up. So we're just gonna slip this in here. I'm gonna tighten it. And then it's actually going to go right down here. You can see these wires are relatively short, so everything's fit exactly. Now, what's funny is one of my previous videos, I soldered to do an end stop, and it turns out in my back of wires, there's an end stop already made. So I didn't even have to do that. Let's check those wires. That's good. Let's do the blue wire. And so that's in, that's right here. That's in to N, and N is right in here. So let's slip this in. Again, these are all labeled. So up a little bit. Sorry about the zoom, I'll have to mess with that. But it's actually labeled. So now I have 
this screwed in. That's screwed in. N is these two here in the middle. So we'll connect N. I'm just going to connect this right here. Now, do a tug test on my last little wire. That's L to L. As I mentioned, it's already labeled. Let's slip that in. And we'll put the power supply going right in this end rolling up. Slip that under, hold it in place, and tighten that in. So everything's nice and tight. So we have that set up. Again, nice and easy. Now, what we will need to do is let's start connecting things to our solid state relay. Now, I have another wire, and this is the Solid state relay M4 to the PCB PG. So that's going to go right here. Now, you notice this is a round connection. So, what I'm going to need to do is basically take that screw out, slip this in, and then put the screw back in. But let's first get this connected on this side. Now, what side do I want this on? I want this on just to match everything one to two. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's one and two. So I'm going to put it right down in there. Let me get a driver so we can back that screw out. This is sort of, and I wish I'd done this last night when I was doing the other part. Um, so I'm just going to take this, slip this through this hole. Oops. Slip this through the hole. The driver on top of it. And then tighten that down. So that one's done. Now we're putting in the next, next wire I have is the another L. So this one is labeled uh, SSRL PCBL. L is right in here. We're just going to connect this in right here. And switch. This is one case where having multiple drivers really helps. Now, I want to just look at this real carefully because I want this one going into number one. I want to make sure I have this right. This is going to go to number one. So that's right there. So. This one to come back around here. And I'm putting that in the slot on the SSR solid state relay mark number one. So I have that in. That's actually all my AC parts. So what I'm going to do is a first, actually, I have a piece of plastic in here. I'm not sure what this is to. So I'm going to put this aside. And now I have the empty bag. Let's throw that away. And I'm going to pause for a second so I can look and see what the next set of wires I need to do are. 
this next step, we're going to connect the bed. So first we have this, and this is to the SSR. As you can see, it's again a circle connection. So we need to actually take this screw out. And do this. Pick this up. And as you can see, the reason why I like the Mercury One connections is how easy it is for me to take those on and off the DIN rail. Now, I'm trying to do this where I can see. So I have that on the DIN rail, I mean, on the connection there. And then this one needs to actually go to the frame. So what I'll probably do, let me get a, see how I want this. What there, or do I want it under there? Let me get a T-nut. And what I'm gonna do is just Put this right against here in the frame. So let me get a T-nut and we'll get that screwed in. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to take this M36. I'm going to screw it into a hammerhead T-nut. And then just mount this into the frame. Now that's not exactly how I want it. Ah, that's good. Yeah, so I have that into the frame. Now, so my next steps are my bed wires, and one's going to the PCB N, and one's going to the SSR. So let's figure out which one's which. So the N is the ones right here in the middle. So we only have one left open. So I'm taking the wire that says for PCBN. So I've been it in there. Tighten in it. And then if we look at our diagram, the heated bed should be going into the SSR at number two, which is right over here. So I'm gonna loosen that up. Again, if I do this over again, I loosen everything before I installed it on the DIN rail. And it's nice and tight. And this is the thermistor wire. And that'll go somewhere over here on the board. We'll figure that out here momentarily. So it looks like at least we have the bed done. So we have the bed besides the thermistor. We have the bed hooked up. We have everything going into the PCB, so we can cover that back up. Yeah. Now, for our next steps, we're going to have to put in our power. Uh, see, we're gonna take power from the uh, solid state relay. And let's put that into the board. Now that's really going in an odd way because it's going to go around. So I might need to turn this board around the other way. So let me find the correct wires and then we'll take a look and see how we need to hook this up. Now I'm noticing I have two uh, motor power to power. I really don't know where these are supposed to go. Um, I'm not running a second power supply just for the motors. So what I'm going to do is sort of ignore these for right now. So I'm just going to put those aside. Let me move my screen stuff around so you can see the board and see the power supply and all that good stuff so we can see all the connections. So I just move stuff around a little bit. Now I have this set of cords and these are, let's see what these are. 
This is SSR to HE1, which will be the second two right over here. So the second two screws. Second set, I mean. So let's first loosen this up. So I'm loosening up uh, three and four now on the SSR. I'm going to connect the red to three. Tighten this in. The black to four. Make sure those are tight. Then these are going over to the third and fourth connection here. And it's going to be red, then black. So let's get the, so on the third one, I'm inserting the furrow. So let's, let's loosen up a little more and let's do this. I'm going to turn this up on its side so I can see it a little bit. There we go. So now in the fourth screw, we're going to do the black wire. Push that in, hold it in place. And then tighten it. Oops, I think I need to tighten it a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just going to put the slip this in, connect it down. Okay, so that's connected. So let's see what our next connection needs to be. So I'm going to connect the board to power supply. I have these wires. Again, this just says board to the PCU. So I want red positive. Let's go over here to the board. Get this one wire out of the way. Put that to the front. There we go. And black to black. I mean black to negative. It's tight. Close that for right now. And then we're going over here, PCU. And we're going black goes to negative and red goes to positive. So we have that all situated. And let's let me take a look at our next steps. I had a little bit of technical difficulties. I think I accidentally unplugged the camera. So I apologize for that. Let me just go over what I've done. I've connected the power supply. So red to positive, black to negative on the board. Going over to the power supply, black negative, red positive. I've connected the board and I've also connected the SSR two and three over the board as well. And that's for the hot end. So I have all that connected now. For our next step, I'm just looking to see how I need to run the cord for the for the hot end. So I have this. And I need to run this going down to the board, but I'm not exactly sure how I have to do that. So I might actually wait on that step till I have a chance to sort of figure that out. Now, what I will do is let's connect up to my drawing here. I'm going to connect up the various motors with the, to the steppers. So let's get that connected. Let me find a diagram that shows us which one is which. So based on my understanding, the Zs go counterclockwise. So this is Z0, 1, 2, and 3. So what I'm going to do, and I don't have cameras that's going to give me enough space here. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. I have the Z wires here. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to connect this. to Z1. Let's see. Let's 
get the five connector towards the motor. And let's run this. I'm going to go underneath the word here, or I'm sorry, the power supply. And this is X, Y, C, zero. Okay. Now I'm going to skip one. This next one. So I'm skipping this spot and going right to here. And that's going to be Z1. Z1 is this motor here in the back. It's going to be hard to plug in because we have lots of wires here. Oh, not as hard as I thought. Run this underneath here. Again, skipping a spot. And so now we got Z2. I'm going to slip this under the board. And that's going in this next slot. Now, we have lots of wires, so we're just going to sort of worry about those in a little bit because um, there's lots of stuff to do. Wire management here. Now, I'm skipping. It looks like I got a fan connection. And so I'm skipping that, and that last one's Z3. So it's front left corner, Z0, back left corner, Z1. Back right corner, Z2, front right corner, Z3. So we have those connected. As far as I can tell, I have everything connected that, at least from this set of instructions from FormBot, I have everything except the, uh, the EBB board and the screen. And I don't want to connect those till. So I have everything put together and the printer's right side up. I also need to figure out how this EBB cord is actually being run. Um, right now, I'm, I'm sort of unclear on whether this is going through the chains or is this actually just going out the back and coming out down in this hole right here. So if it's coming down in here. So I'm not quite sure. So I need to look at some pictures and see what I can figure out. So for right now, I'm just going to call it a day. I want to thank you for joining me, and hopefully we can get this thing built sooner rather than later. Uh, thanks. Have a good day. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15-minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally, what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.